Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven and today we're diving into the mechanics of the next pass of the feeder. Last time we got this brand new feeder board spun up. It's super fancy because it has support for two motors, one to drive the tape forward and another one to peel the film off actively so that the parts are free to be picked by the nozzle. It actually got spun up working well with a new microcontroller, so super stoked about that. But now it's time to actually have it do the mechanical thing, move the tape forward. This is just a weird shaped microcontroller right now. I needed to actually do the thing. So I've already spent a good chunk of time in CAD making all the mechanical parts for this, and hopefully, by the end of this video, we will have a feeder moving tape forward, peeling film off, serving up parts left and right. Hot and spicy, that is the, that is the goal. And we got a lot of weird little levers and guides and pivots and all kinds of stuff to print out, so let's pop over to the printer and make them. All right, so here's the first cheeky little mechanical thing in the feeder. This little printed flag thing is for detecting when the tape has run out. So when it's pushed up like this, it pushes on this limit switch and the feeder knows that there's tape present. And then when the tape runs out, the little spring inside the limit switch will push the flag back out and it knows it needs to like throw up the alarm and freak out. The guide makes sure ah, ha, that the tape will actually depress that little flag. So you can see here, see it sticking out right there. And then when you slide it up, boom, it pushes it up into the limit switch, and then the button's depressed, and we know we got tape. And there you go, tape detection. I don't know if this works yet. <laughs> it seems like it's depressing the switch, but it's hard to see what's going on inside this, underneath the kind of this bracket, but it looks like it's doing the job. And that leads directly into the other little weird mechanical thing I'm doing, which is the film tension. So this is the little film tension arm, and it mounts right here, and it does kind of the same thing. It's a printed part that is actuated by some part of the tape and pushes into a limit switch. In this case, the limit switch is right here, and then when the film has enough tension, it pushes down on this arm. So ideally, every time it moves tape forward, the film gets a little slack. This is able to move up and undepress the switch, and then the motor knows to pull it down until this becomes taut again. At least that's the idea. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if there's going to be enough strength in the actual spring in the limit switch to push this back out every time. So I added some little like surfaces to mount springs just in case I have to. I like it. <laughs> oh, so exciting, so good. Ah. All right, it's all together, and so far it's all just kind of working. So here's the whole thing bolted together. There's a million cables sticking out the back so I can power program and read data out of it. So I have some really basic firmware on here that just kind of demonstrates all the different things it can do. All right, so first thing when it turns on, it does this little blinky thing to tell you that it's on. <laughs> then we've got basic feeder functionality. So two buttons, move the motor back and forth, and then this little guy, moves the top motor. So I designed this little part that has a triangular interface and it fits really tightly onto the spindle of the motor. But then I have an adjoining spool, which just pops on like that, and that will wind up whatever film you have on your tape. 
Plus, the thing I was most dubious about is tape detection. So if I put some tape in here, and there it goes, it sees it. And then I take it out. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna have to fix that, huh? Plus the final piece of the puzzle is actually getting the data from the optical sensor out of this. And that tells the motor how far it's moved so it knows when to stop. So it's moved forward exactly the right amount for the next part to be served up. And it's barfing out data over the serial monitor. So when I spin that, sure enough, it does it. It does all the bits. And so now the last bit is getting all of those little parts working together to move in concert and know when to do what thing so that the tape moves forward exactly the right amount. It peels the film off, all that good stuff. Oh, so close. I'm so close, I'm so close. Now it's just writing a lot of code. <laughs> I'm really happy. This freaking thing works. I'm not gonna lie though, it was pretty tricky getting the firmware to work in such a way that this whole thing operates correctly. The motor that I'm using has a really a uh, small gearing ratio. So the motor usually spins really fast and then the gears bring the speed down but the torque up with the TT motor, the gearbox on the end of the actual physical motor. The TT motors that I'm using don't have as high a gear ratio so the output still spins pretty darn fast. So I had kind of a tough time figuring out how to drive the motor driver so that it would still be strong and pull the tape forward, but not go so fast that it would just fly by every window in the indexing wheel. I did manage to find something that worked, which ended up being like small little bursts of pretty high power and then a little bit of a delay so that it doesn't have a chance to build up momentum. So it's like a whole bunch of little bursts. It's like a impact driver kind of thing is how I'm thinking about it. And it works pretty well. They do all these little bursts and eventually it gets to the point that it hits the threshold I set in the code and it moves very precisely one pip each time. And you might've caught this in the shots that you just saw, but I did have to add a spring to the tension arm. I was hoping, 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 hoping that the spring in the limit switch would be enough to push the film up and actually physically do the peeling. When the tape moves forward, it provides a little bit of extra space for the film to peel, but a force needs to be applied to make that peeling happen. And ideally that comes from the tension of the, the little tension arm. The limit switch didn't have it in it. I had to add a little bit of extra force to really get it to peel. But once I added a little spring, it just freaking peels right up. It gets a little bit more slack. The motor moves. Bob's your uncle. Oh yeah, and my little spool holder too. I realized last minute that I didn't have a, a thing to actually hold a spool for this design. So I made a little thing that has these two little flaps that come together with magnets. So if you want to remove the spool, you just pull it apart, the spool falls right out. So I think we've pretty wholeheartedly accomplished our goal here. Finally, after like, what, I don't know, five, six episodes about a feeder, this is a design that consistently works. It peels film, it dispenses tape at very precise increments. I also still have to test with different tape widths. I've only ever used a 12 millimeter with this feeder design, but there's also eight, 16, and 24 millimeter that I also want to test. But my CAD model is like super parametric, so you can just change the width of the tape and it just scales everything pretty easily. So I got to test those. And then of course, RS45. We got to get it talking and that, 
will be the next episode. We're getting this thing to talk to the motherboard with new feeder floors and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully they'll be able to identify each other from the slot that they're in. Mm. Mm. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be really cool. All right, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like The Index, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I wanna thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. I'm really, truly a huge fan of their matte black with the gold finish. They always look really, really nice. I've been using their boards for months now, and I've literally always been super happy with the boards I get. They come super quick, they're incredibly inexpensive. They have an engineer check over your designs before they actually put them into production. They've helped me catch quite a number of mistakes in the past already. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend you check them out. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. It doesn't actually taste that bad, I was just being dramatic. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, 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 like this. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, projects like this, projects like this, projects like this, projects like this.